Way back in the 20th century, a 16 millimeter projector in the classroom meant a fun movie day instead of a boring teacher lecture. The films told students the correct way to do things. But what if the kids learned a different cinematic lesson? Were these health films educating students about good and bad behavior or teaching them a good way to be bad? Was there a dark and dangerous side to health films? I'm Doug McMillan of the Connells. Join me for Danger Health Films. Tonight we learn whether health films warned us about the danger of teen troubles or taught teen troubles. The Gang takes us back to a time when teenage kids had major ambitions to terrorize the neighborhood. That piano had it coming. I was taking roll this one morning, and uh, the door opens. And standing there are three boys that I had never seen before. And one of them calls out to me and, and says, um, Hey, uh, are, are you the teacher? And uh, I say, yeah, Yes, I am. And he says, uh, Mr. I'm going to kill you. That's an extreme version of Riverdale. As I think back, some of the best times in my life is when me and my brothers would go and pick up my father, take him out and just show him a good time while we could. Anyway, it happened that night. Happened one night he was at a store. Pull up to a store to get a little drink. And along comes this gang. These chumps come up, one of them pulls out a shotgun and puts it to my father's head right here and pulls the trigger point blank. This is why Bruce Lee didn't wash windows. Criminals, that's what they are, criminals. 12, 13 year old lawbreakers. But when they're brought before me in my court and I look down at their faces, faces just like my grandson, I think, my God, what a shame. That's the soft spot judge that troubled teens need to beg for. What a, a damn shame, what they're doing. That they don't realize that they themselves are as much the victims of their violence as we are. Now we celebrate these destructive people on home renovation shows. This is more of a fixer downer. I'm a principal and my assignment was the worst grammar school in the district. A school that was always being vandalized. I decided to meet the problem with an action program. And I knew it had to begin with the principal. Because the principal sets the tone of the school. These kids need to be arrested for mixing those colors. A killing. I've been to so many funerals. I'm tired. But now they're saying they want me to go to a meeting and talk or whatever it is. Ain't no really no real reason except they want to see a, a, a real live game member. Okay, I'll be there. And I'll even dress up for the occasion. Trouble Teens, a Quinn Martin production. These people are probably going to expect me to come in and bow and say, Ah, oh, ah, so, very pleased to meet you. The only thing is, is they are not going to get a polite, smiling Buddha head. 
Well, it certainly isn't your normal conference hall, but it is effective. I hate you. You say you know where we coming from, but you ain't know the damn thing about it. No more than a little man with a mustache or anybody else in here. How is anyone supposed to feel anger from a kid in a turban? I hate you, man. I hate you. Is this your card? You hate me, man. That's the worst part about it. You can keep on ripping off each other and keep on tearing up each other's neighborhoods and hating each other. Oh, man, you can buckle down and see what's really going on. And then once you explode, you tear up everything, including yourself. And more than likely, you'll be the first to go. What are you talking about? You're a Tom, man. It seems like this room has produced some ugly situations. You brought me in here, and you blame me. You don't know me. You don't know what I'm thinking, man. The turban wearer has to know what the other person is thinking. You say, hey, this is your fault. This is not my fault. This is your fault, man. The people in this... Look at me. Look at me! The people in this room are a lot uglier than the room. No one listens and no one cares and I want to get the hell out of here! This was an applause line in any health class. That's your choice. Before you go, please, remember why we came here. Violence. That's what brought us here. That's what we have to get rid of. The Latinos are fighting the Latinos. The blacks are fighting the blacks, the Asians fight the Asians, the whites fight the whites, and everybody is fighting each other. And here we are, with our own little fights. And scene. The gang reminds us that there were scary kids in the 70s, although a turban kills the vibe. When I'm old enough, goodbye allows a teenage son to quit school and enter the prosperous world of the mailroom. He's not going into outer space. He's just blasted out of school. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> All those students look too old for high school. I'll call you. Feels pretty good, though. Sure. In my first steady job, Pop, Remember how it was? Yeah? Mr. Willard from the school. He called me. Yeah? He's got some idea maybe it's not the right thing. <sighs> ah, Mr. Willard. What does he know about me? What does he know about work? Look at you. Gee, you didn't even get past the sixth grade. You're doing great. Good job. Same place all your life. That's important, Pop. You told me that. Think we should talk some more? Later, when the kids are in bed? No, I don't know, uh, Pop. Uh, Bonnie said I could stop by a while uh, after homework's finished. Oh, well. Dad needs to get ready for his night of terrorizing the family. To tell you the truth, Doug, I don't mind homework. I even like school. Bonnie, it is different with a girl. I don't see the difference. You don't? No, I think lots of boys like school. <laughs> he dropped out before they taught him how to kiss. No more extra credit for him. But look how many men in charge of big companies started this way. Can't wait forever, can you? I guess your mom and me, we just hate to see you growing up so fast, that's all. The job's right for me. It's like I'm alive. Like I'm finally waking up. In 1961, a dropout worked in a mailroom, and he's now worth six billion dollars. That man is David Geffen, who sadly is not the star of this film. The job's going fine. 
it's, oh, it's a little monotonous, that's all. Yeah, but I'm looking around in my lunch hour for something better. He used to talk this way about school work, too. Maybe. But now I can choose. Choose train spotting. So we will begin retraining our older men in the operating procedures of the new Milo automatic sorting and filing machine. As a result, we will be forced immediately to let men go in order of seniority. Ask not who sorts the mail. The mail sorts you, Doug. You have two minutes to finish those applications. Yeah, we may have something. You out of high school? Yes, sir. Graduate? Oh, well, no, uh, not, not exactly. Oh, no point in filling this out. Come back in about three weeks. Mr. Sloan? The lesson here is you never admit you dropped out of high school. We may be putting some extra wrappers on then. Claim you graduated from a high school that burned down last year. Doug Miller. How are you? Hi, Mr. Willard. Oh, uh, this is Mrs. Willard. Good evening, Doug. Just, uh, looking in at the dance. How's your family? Your father? Real fine, thanks. Still working at the, um, the Sheldon plant, like always. Are you still at Bolton's? No. I got something better coming up. You don't need an education if you have forgery skills. That's great. Doug. If that new job doesn't work out, why don't you drop by the State Employment Service? Ask for Ralph Norman. Yeah, sure. You'll like him. He's been out here working with our guidance program. Yeah? Talk with him. Tell him I sent you. He'll have some ideas. Okay, thanks. Doug? Now tell him you'll drop around. We know jobs. We know what the employer says he needs. Now our job is to help you see where you fit. The things that you have to do nowadays to make yourself fit. I know where I fit, Mr. Norman. I know what I want. Doug looks like he's ready to star in a substance abuse film. All my life I've only wanted to get out of school and work like my father and his father. What's so wrong about that? Times are changing, Doug. It's different now. Here's a life insurance company. They need men. Now, the work's not going to be any better than your other jobs. But it'll give you some money. It'll fill in. Thanks. Think about what I said. I want to see you again. Doug is ready for another dead-end career tract. Doug had some big layoffs at the plant. Just doing this to fill in, keep some money coming. Just temporary. When I'm old enough, goodbye ends like a Harry Chapin song, except his dad was just like him. Coincidentally, Harry Chapin was on David Geffen's record label. Doug just picked the wrong mailroom for becoming a dropout billionaire. The Party's Over brings this TV party to an end with a superstar cameo. Well, first off, let's not forget that there is such a thing as a legal drinking age. And in many places, the buying or even the possessing of alcohol, liquor, if you're underage, can mean problems. What teenager wouldn't be excited about rapping about drinking with Les Nesman from WKRP in Cincinnati? Now, keeping that in mind, at what age do you think drinking should begin? Jennifer? I think 18 would be a good age to start. You weren't even thought well, about Mark, it. Well, Mark, it's what already 18. I, I don't see any reason why I have to be that old. I mean, maybe for hard liquor or something <laughs> like that, but beer or wine or something like that, I think you should be maybe 16. Mm. 
Fred, do you really think uh, that you're old enough? Stupid. Uh, if you're old enough to drive when you're 16, then you've got enough judgment and maturity to, to drink when you're 16. I think it's... I mean, you, I can, think you can get out of get age. age. Let's, you have, let's have one you person have at a time. Here we go. In the gutter at 30 are probably the people that started drinking. They were 11 and 12. They want drinking age to be fifth grade. Well, like, most of the accidents on roads have been caused by drunken people and things like that. And it could really be dangerous. Don't forget, on Monday, we'll have that report of the interview with the chief of police. All right? Oh, Sarah, what time's your party tonight? About 7.30. Okay. What's that? A party? Why didn't Sarah put it on the school's morning announcements? How come you weren't invited to Sarah's party tonight? Sarah's having a party? Yeah, Nora said there are just going to be some girls and their parents aren't going to be there. First rule of party club is zip it. Oh, I wouldn't go to that if you paid me. That's kid stuff. Yeah. Oh, I think somebody's just cut that out. Hey, uh, let's go to this party, too. What do you mean? Crash it? Yeah, why not? Hey, let's do. We know everybody there. I'm in. Oh, I don't know. Oh, come on. It'll be lots of fun. We'll just stop by for a while. Well, OK. Great. I'm going to bring you some brew. Yeah, what are you going to get? Oh, I'll grab it out of the fridge from old man's not looking. I do it all the time. At least he's a BYOB party crasher. Cool. Listen, I left out plenty of food for you kids. Oh, and there's a frozen pizza in the refrigerator in case you feel like that. Frozen pizza? This is a party worth crashing. Okay. I want your girls to be asleep when we get home. It'll be late. Agreed? Agreed. Good night, huh? Wow, what a dull looking party. Hey, Sarah, what's happening? This was the night the party arrived. Here's Freddy. Sorry, girls. We're going to party with this girl. Yeah. Allow me to provide some refreshments. Ta da! Hey, out of sight. Let's see a Freddy's fridge. Fred did bring enough for everyone to share. Hey, nobody said anything about drinking. This is my house and my. Oh, it won't hurt. Make you relax. Be real cool. So how about one of the drinky poo? Huh? Hey, Friday. And I recommend L.T. for wine. Get nice and high. Fly around the room by. <laughs> Man, sidewalks is for sissies. So if you want to lie in the gutter like a real man, try wino. <laughs> Straight from Nevada. <laughs> Fred is a triple threat as a provocateur, comic, and teen drunk. This is the nicest wine I ever tasted. It's the bestest wine in the whole wide world. Hey, she drank the whole bottle. Come back, you wino. What's the matter? Are you talking something? Well, well, so this is Nora. Had enough to drink? Oh, come on. I just tasted a little. I wanted to see what it was like. Nora, what's going on in there? Fred's getting a little drunk. Oh, great. Hey, remember what happened when Fred got drunk at the basketball game? He started a fight with one of the teachers. Oh, wow. What should I do? Call the police. That'll serve him right. Sarah is a party pooper with IBS. No, call the neighbors. Ask them for help. Don't do anything. They'll leave when they're out of alcohol. Second rule of party club, don't rat yourself out. Tell them to leave her else. I better go in there and do something. What if we kill Fred? Okay. I'm sorry, I just don't think school is the proper place for my son to be taught his drinking habits. But he's not taught drinking habits, Alice. This alcohol project gives kids information. I know Sarah will need to make a decision about drinking. We're not always around. I bet Fred could lighten up this lame adult party. Our son Stephen came up to me this afternoon, looked at the buffet and said, Good, Dad. It's better not to drink on an empty stomach. That's what I mean. They're learning. Give them some facts. Get it out in the open. Let them recognize for themselves what their responsibilities are. Uh, I'm almost empty. Uh, can I get anybody anything? Oh, no, thank you. No, we should be going. We have to drive anyway. I told you about checking in on Sarah's party at our place. When are you guys leaving? Oh, come on, sir. We just got it. Third rule of party club, don't paw the hostess. Oh, I mean, get him out of my house. Wait a minute, sir. Give me a second to talk to him. Come on, Freddy. Will you just tell me what I did that was so bad? Sometimes you're a real bummer. Oh, give me one of your lectures. I'm going to give you a fat lip. That's what I'm going to give you. Hey, booze. Leave their booze alone. 
whiskey. Hey man, where did you get that stuff? A gift from Sarah's dad. Fourth rule of party club, only swipe your old man's boots. Put that stuff back. They don't belong to you. We're not allowed not to. Not allowed, says who? When Fred was partying, Jack Daniels was there. My parents will be furious when they find out about their liquor, Freddy. Hey, Norm, how about another drink? Uh-uh, I'm not getting drunk like you, Fred. Fred is losing his magic touch. Can't you get him to stop? Are you kidding? All I gotta do is try and he'll get a girl who doesn't care if he drinks or not. You know, we can all get into trouble for this. I told him that and he just told me I was crazy. What is that? God, what a bunch of babies! Cutting sissies! You know if it weren't for me, you'd all be having a pretty lousy time. Leave my house! Right now! Your house? Well, this is what I think of your house! Fred just killed Jack Daniels. I thought you were my friend. I want another drink. Fred let us all down. You're not my hero anymore. Now what the hell is going on here? What the hell is going on in here? The party's over for real now. The lesson is to keep Party Club on the down low. These teens would have learned that from Dr. Johnny Fever. What do you think now? Did these films warn troubled teens or show students how to scare old people? lie for dead-end jobs, and keep parties a secret from Fred.